Before we dive deep into this series, let's take a video to talk about what Kedro is. It's an unopinionated data engineering framework that comes with a somewhat opinionated template. It gives the user a way to build pipelines that automatically take care of file IO through the use of abstract data sets that the user specifies through catalog entries. These catalog entries are loaded and ran through a function and saved by nodes. The order of these nodes are executed and determined by the pipeline, which is a DAG, which means uh, directed acyclic graph, means you know things can go one way, but they can't loop around and, and come back through. Um, and then it's the runner's job to manage the execution of these nodes. Uh, this article is second edition. I have a link to the first edition here. Uh, hot take real quick. If you're doing a series of operations on data with Python, especially if you're using something like Pandas, you should be using a framework that gives you a pipeline as a DAG and abstracts the IO. So you don't have to worry about, you know, saving everything to exactly how you want it, where you want it. Something takes care of that for you. You shouldn't be like worrying about uh, running your whole ETL pipeline all at once. You should be able to slice out exactly what you need to run at any time through a DAG. Right, let's talk about the uh, the way that Kedro runs. Uh, like I said, Kedro is an unopin is unopinionated. It does determine where or how your data is ran, but the Kedro team does support the following orchestrators. Um, with a you know you have to add just a little bit to their base template. Uh, they support Argo workflows. Prefect, uh, Kubeflow workflows, uh, AWS Batch, Databricks. Um, I don't know if they're missing some. So this came, this list comes from their deployment guide here. Uh, but I, I feel like they are missing some. I've seen Airflow for one. Um, and then kind of behind the scenes here on Batch and Kubeflow is Docker. So they do support Docker out of the box, which means you have like a whole host of places that you can go with that. Um, like I said, Edro is unopinionated and data sets really help with that. Uh, they allow Kedro to be flexible across a number of different Python objects. Any Python object can be made into a Kedro data set. Kedro comes out of the box with quite a few purpose-built data sets, like storing pandas data frames as Parquet, CSV, or a SQL table. If Kedro doesn't support with the come with support for the type of object you work with, don't worry. You can simply just clone down uh, or fork one of their existing data sets and try to find one that's as close as you can to the one you need and just give it a little tweak and you should be good to go. Uh, you can also uh, use a pickle data set. Like if you don't want to build your own, but you just have a Python object you want to store, even if it's something like integer or list, you can just throw that in a pickle data set and it works just fine. Uh, so the way we, we point uh, things towards these data sets and these data sets are our four specific Python objects going to a specific file type. You use the catalog. So as a pipeline user, the catalog is, is typically what you'll be uh, doing. And like I said, Kedro takes care of all the file IO for you. All the data set needs is typically something like a file path. Um, so here's an example of creating a test catalog entry a type of pandas.csv. So this will take a pandas object and store it as a CSV. Um, you can see down here another example from their docs on CSV dataset. You can also um, pass in load args and save args. And these will, uh, every time you hit, hit um, the pipeline goes to save or load 
this data set, it will pass these extra arguments to the CSV data set. Uh, so you might want to not store the index, have a specific date format, uh, things like that. All right, on to the nodes. A uh, very critical piece of Kentro. Uh, it, it's used to build up this DAC, and it's what provides the definition of which catalog entries come into a function and come out of a function. Um, it, it's what helps build this relationship to define our graph structure. Um, so here's an example. Um, in this example, they've provided two different functions and then a list of nodes. So we have three nodes here. Uh, the first one is going to run clean data on on two inputs, cars 2017 and boats 2017. And then it's going to output a dictionary of cars of clean cars 2017 and clean boats 2017. Uh, next, it's going to run the half data frame on clean cars. Then finally, it will run the half data frame on clean boats 2017. Output, output, train boats and test boats 2017. Um, so simply, you're you're just pointing uh, functions and catalog entries to nodes. Uh, from there, the pipeline object will then construct the DAG, a directed acyclic graph. Um, again, means that these nodes flow in one direction only; they can't flow in two different directions. Um, and it gives us quite a few ways to kind of introspect uh, this graph object. We can do things like from nodes or to nodes. So we can say, I only want to take this pipeline from the beginning to this node or from this node out. Uh, we can also do to outputs and from outputs, which are um, for date. Uh, catalog entries rather than the nodes themselves. We can also ask this uh, pipeline what its outputs are or what its inputs are. Uh, pretty handy, like if you're moving in uh, a project from one environment to another, it's pretty critical to know what the edges are of this pipeline to understand. Um, we need access to certain databases. We need access to S3 buckets, things like that. Um, you know, out, yeah, you can ask for both inputs and outputs. It also comes with all inputs and all outputs, which is not just the edges, but all the internal pieces too. Uh, an example of creating a pipeline here uh, just takes a list of nodes. So those nodes that we uh, looked at just above, uh, you can pass those right into a pipeline. Uh, the runner is a bridge between Kedro and the orchestrators. So the Kedro team provides some very basic runners in the project, and they give you, um, we just talked a little bit about up here, these, these other ones, they provide you a way to either plug them in or um, vendor in some sort of runner into your project. Um, So, so these runners, the, the two that it comes with out of the box, one is a um, sequential runner, which just runs one node at a time. And then another one is a parallel runner. It will figure out the set of nodes, which all the dependencies have been resolved, run all those in parallel. And then after that, figure out what dependencies, which nodes have all their dependencies resolved, run all those in parallel, on and on. Um, Hooks is a fairly new piece of Kedro. It allows the user to hook into lifecycle methods within Kedro. It uses the Pluggy framework, the one that was developed by PyTest and pulled out of PyTest. Um, there are a number of different lifecycle methods. I'm not going to list them all here. You can find them in the docs. I feel like they, um, they add more and more as time goes on anyways. Um, 
but you can do things like before pipeline run or after catalog loaded. Um, I've ran into some situations where like my file paths, something weird was going on there and we had a large catalog and a simple way to fix that is I just made a hook that said after catalog loaded, go through all the data sets and make sure that their file path looks right. Um, you do all sorts of really cool things. It really makes it so rather than if you don't like the way that Kedro runs, you don't have to get uh, what you need uh, implemented into Kedro itself. You can simply make a hook to cover most of what you need to uh, change how it works. Um, I've got some links here in the end of the article. That cover some of the things we talked about in this video, but that is um, what Kedro is to me. Again, I think if you are running any ETL job in Python with a series of Python objects, especially something like that is well supported like Pandas, you need to be using a framework like this that abstracts your IO and gives you that DAG object.